father, uh, because of the pressures that he uh, underwent, uh, uh, eventually uh, abandoned us. I was about four or five years old. I remember being placed in a shelter for children because my mother was unable to take care of us. And I remember when she used to come to visit, oh man, I didn't want to let her go. I just wept and wept. And, uh, but uh, eventually she would say to me, I'm coming back. We stayed less than a year because my mother recovered and her goal was to, to get us back. Then I grew, grew older and uh, in, 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 in adolescent years I began to use drugs and not attend school. I was around 11 years old and my mother had very little control. And by that time we had uh, 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 seven of us because my, our father was in and out of our life. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll come around, pregnant her, and then just take, back, take off again. My father was a preacher. And my mother got saved through his preaching. But when he came to this country, and he went, uh, experienced a lot of pressure, a lot of uh, difficulties, then he fled. Right. And so, but she continued in the faith. So you grew up with a lot of lack. You grew up with a lot of lack um, in the natural, things to keep you warm, and um, you didn't have the presence of your dad. Do you feel like that was what drove you to go into the lane of drugs? You grow up in a country that esteems uh, uh, power, money, position, and then in those days, as you know, in those days we were also suffering. It was, it was racism in those days. Mm -hmm. And so here's a kid that is suffering abandonment issues, self-esteem issues, mm -hmm. uh, self-worth issues. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I got sick, pneumonia, and, the, and my mother taking me to the emergency room, and doctors said, wow, don't you watch this kid? I had so much dirt accumulated on me that, that you couldn't wash it in one day, wash mm -hmm. this thing off. So if you grow up under those conditions and those environmental conditions, it does affect you. It does affect your self-worth. It, 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 you, you feel like you're unworthy, that you're, you're, not, you're worthless. And that's, that's, that was my, my life story. And eventually you go out to, to, to get involved with, in, 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 with gangs because gangs provides a sense of, of acceptance. I had, I had, I had robbed drug dealers. I had put. I used to. I used to walk all this at nighttime, mm -hmm. just to escape people seeing me. Well, when you start using heroin, it's like an all-day thing. You're out in the streets all day long. It's like a. It's like a job. You're working out there all day, and your whole life is concentrated and focused on getting drugs. Drug addicts are enterprising people. They find ways of, of making money. I mean, the most drastic way of making money is by taking it away from somebody or armed robbery or, or you know, those type of ways. But, you know, burglary and breaking an entry and uh, deceiving people and selling drugs and then, and then selling counterfeit drugs, which is not really drugs. You do whatever it takes. You sell oregano and you tell, tell people that there's, there's marijuana in there and, and uh, you sell sugar milk and you tell them heroin is there in the bag. Uh, you sell a big box that, that says that there's a TV in it but you, have a, you just have the frame and you have a rock in it. So you do whatever it takes to make, to make money. Fifth grade reading level. Uh, didn't have any trade, no skills. So you know, you feel you feel like garbage. Right. You feel like yeah, that, that you're not going to amount to anything. And then my mother continued to pray, continued to to share the word. And the more she shared, the more angry I got. Right. I would curse God. I would curse her. I said, Look, I'll tell you, I proved to you that there is no God. And I, the profanity that came out of my mouth, mm -hmm. I'll curse God. I curse everything about God. I said, You see, 
here I am, I'm still alive, there is no God. Right. And, uh, but she kept patiently, my mother was a woman of God. Can you imagine this little lady living in this apartment mm -hmm. and she has seven boys and they're all involved with drugs. And I remember getting arrested one day. My two brothers were there on the same floor, the same prison. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, that was our lifestyle. And I was in and out of hospitals, detoxing, 22 times. Went to different programs, that didn't help. Uh, try religion, Mohammed speak, Jehovah Witness, that didn't work. And so after a while, you know, you, you, you fail and you fail and you fail, so you finally succumb mm. to this lifestyle. And eventually my, my goal at, at one time was to kill a cop. I used to walk by this area here because um, this was, this was an area which was isolated and there was nobody around. And I knew that there were some people that wanted to kill me because of the lifestyle that I lived. I had, I had perpetrated violent crime on a lot of people in this area. And I knew people wanted to kill me. So when I walked past, my house is here on Flushing Avenue. And so I had to come to these, these, these areas where there was nobody around. And as I, as I crossed the street here, the car was parked, I think, oh, I think right, right here there was a car parked and I wasn't, even, I wasn't even aware that they were here. And as I passed by, they got out of the car here and they shot me. They shot at me about four or five times because I felt the, the bullets just passing my face. They meant to kill me and about two bullets hit, hit my side here. And, I, and this is where I lay uh, bleeding, to, uh, bleeding profusely internally. And, uh, and this is where I began to cry out to God that he, would, that he would save me, that he would give me another chance to serve him. I, I, I said to him, I know I deserve this, but if you give me another chance, I will serve you to the day I die. As I was laying, dying, dying here, God gave me the ability, God gave me the power to get up and to, uh, to walk. And I, and I turned the corner there on Flushing Avenue because there were some people there. And there, uh, they, uh, a lady saw that I was dying. I fell right there and they called the police immediately. They shot me, when they shot me, they, they, they knew I was gonna die, these people. Well, the way I was shot. But they didn't, they didn't, they, 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 they didn't realize that once you cry out to God, and the way I cried out to God, that, that he was gonna give me God was going to give me another chance. So this is, this is the area. I'm sitting with someone like you who talks about having such a wonderful mother who made such a mark, such an imprint on your life. I mean, as a young boy, you're like wet cement, but she really made an imprint on your life and you still hear her voice and the voice of her prayers. But there's others, like even myself, that didn't have that in their life. But there's a, a God who sent his son, who ever lives to make intercession for us. So we all have someone who is praying for us and sees worth and value in, the each, in each one. I mean, that's just amazing to me. Mm -hmm. I feel the same way you did. Like, you saw value in me? In me? You know, I was the garbage can that you were. And, Look at us today, you know, we're filled vessels. We're vessels of honor in his house. Um, tell me about your passion today for men and women. My passion, you know, I'm, I have Anchor House and I believe that God has invested in my life a whole lot. And, and, and so my goal is everything that God has invested in my life, I want to pour it out and I want to impart it to the men and women of Anchor House, to, to people, to brothers and sisters, or any, any person that, I'm encounter, that I encounter in life, I want to share with them and say, look, look what God has done in my life. You know, I, he's given me life and life more abundant. He's given me a peace that passes on understanding, a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Only he can provide that.